The Wongs vs. The World, 2016, is a comedic novel by Jade Chong, a Chinese-American author. The story revolves around Charles Wong, an immigrant from China, as he navigates the 2008 financial crash and his own bankruptcy. Determined to reclaim his family's ancestral lands in China, Charles gathers his family for a bold and somewhat delusional journey. Critics praised Chang's debut novel for its vibrant and energetic storytelling. The narrative begins by introducing Charles's children, who discover the news of his bankruptcy. His eldest daughter, Sina, faces additional challenges as a fallen star in the art world. She resides in a farmhouse in upstate New York, where her ex-boyfriend, Grayson, unexpectedly shows up, seeking reconciliation after their breakup. Sina's current boyfriend, Leo, witnesses the encounter and immediately ends their relationship. Grayson, too, abruptly leaves upon receiving a call from his girlfriend, Sabrina. Next, the focus shifts to Andrew, the eldest son attending Arizona State University. Andrew has just declined his girlfriend Emma's advances, unwilling to lose his virginity to someone he doesn't love. An argument ensues, and Emma storms off. Shortly after, Andrew receives a distressing call from his sister, Grace, who is attending boarding school. Grace is deeply upset about their father's bankruptcy, unaware of the extent of their financial loss. Andrew reveals that each child has lost a $7 million trust fund. Grace, perceiving their father's actions as a test, decides to handle the situation in her own way. Meanwhile, Grace's headmistress demands payment for an unpaid laptop. In the midst of downloading her style blog content, Grace is confronted by Charles and his wife, Barbara. Charles throws money at the headmistress and swiftly takes the laptop, further reinforcing Grace's suspicion that her father's bankruptcy is nothing more than a performance. Charles takes matters into his own hands by renting a U-Haul and breaking into one of his former warehouses. His plan is to personally deliver a large cosmetics order and collect cash payment. However, his lawyers contact him with unexpected news, a different Charles Wong has already laid claim to their ancestral land in China. They are currently investigating this mysterious situation. A flashback reveals how Charles ended up losing everything. Believing that the Asian cosmetics industry was on the verge of a lucrative boom, he had borrowed heavily against both his business and personal assets to fund a new cosmetics venture. When the financial crisis hit, the bank called in the loan, leading to his devastating loss. Charles acknowledges that his downfall was a result of his pride, as he was determined not to appear weak or cautious in front of the white bankers who granted him the loan. Meanwhile, Andrew attends an economics lecture on the credit crisis. The professor unfairly blames a Chinese mathematician for spreading the notion that financial risk could be managed through mathematical models. Incensed by the racist tone, Andrew loses his temper, publicly revealing his family's bankruptcy before storming out of the lecture hall. Sina reconciles with her boyfriend, Leo. However, upon returning home, she finds an art critic named Billy Alalani waiting for her, seeking an interview. Sina knows that if she declines, Billy will tarnish her reputation once again, but she chooses to refuse anyway. Charles and the rest of the Wong family unexpectedly barge into Andrew's dorm room, catching him in a compromising situation. Later, at a budget motel where they are staying for the night, Andrew confides in his sister Grace that he is still a virgin. In a moment of vulnerability, Grace admits that she is not, leading Andrew to react with anger and humiliation. Meanwhile, Barbara overhears Charles speaking with his lawyers and realizes his intention to reclaim their Chinese heritage. A heated argument ensues between them. At the next stop on their journey, Andrew comes across a notice for an open mic comedy night and convinces his mother to watch him perform. However, his attempt to satirize Asian stereotypes falls flat, leaving Andrew feeling embarrassed once again. The Wongs then visit Charles's friend Nash in Louisiana, who invites them to a rustic wedding where bourbon flows freely. During the festivities, Charles and Andrew get into a heated argument, leading Andrew to storm off. A fellow wedding guest named Dory offers Andrew a ride and takes him to a cabaret in New Orleans. The next morning, waking up in her bed, Andrew decides to let go of his virginity. He announces to his family that he will be staying in New Orleans. Meanwhile, Sina receives a distressing phone call informing her that her assets have been frozen. When the Wongs reach Alabama, Charles discovers that the scorching heat has melted the cosmetics in his truck. 
Aware that his refund checks will bounce, he writes them anyway and drives off. Barbara contemplates leaving Charles, but ultimately decides against it because she still loves him. As she ponders this, the car's engine fails, causing them to veer off the road. In a moment of fear, Grace has an epiphany, realizing that style is a superficial aspect of beauty. Thankfully, no one is injured, but the family finds themselves stranded in North Carolina. Meanwhile, Andrew comes to the realization that he has made a mistake. He parts ways with Dory and aimlessly wanders through the French Quarter. Encountering another open mic night, he decides to improvise a new routine. Drawing inspiration from his own life experiences, Andrew's fresh material captivates the audience. Finally, the family arrives at Sina's house, where they meet Leo and are surprised to find Sina in good spirits, despite a scathing article written by Billy Alalani. That night, Charles receives news that an imposter has claimed his Chinese lands. Determined to confront the situation, he feels compelled to leave. Arriving in Beijing, Charles realizes that his childhood memories were predominantly of Taiwan, and the reality of China differs from his imagination. He eventually locates the family's land and experiences a profound sense of connection to it. He performs a ritual by burying a fragment of his father's bone and urinating on the soil, only to notice a billboard advertising upcoming city apartments on the same land. Sina discovers that Leo has a child and feels hurt by his omission, leading her to ask him to leave. At that moment, the siblings receive an email informing them that Charles is hospitalized in Beijing. They rush to China, with Barbara realizing her passport has expired. Charles has suffered a minor stroke, reminiscent of the condition that claimed his own father's life. He reveals that he confronted the family friend who had been impersonating him and engaged in a physical altercation. He sends the children out to fetch dinner. While they are eating, an urgent message arrives, summoning them back to the hospital immediately. Upon their arrival, Barbara is already by Charles's bedside. Unfortunately, Charles has experienced another stroke. From Charles's perspective, his reflections on the family's history unfold. Though he can barely speak, he manages to convey his desires for his children to understand, saying, Daddy discovered America. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.